These photos of the North Midlands are a somewhat random selection of images, which come mostly from the State Library of Western Australia. During the 1800s and early 1900s, a number of people perished while travelling through the North Midlands. Some lost their way in the bush, while others ran out of food and water. This drawing was created by Walter Hodgson and is of a man dying in the bush near Karoo. The Daily News, a newspaper produced in Perth, reported in January 1896. Another victim added to the long list of those who have perished in the dreary bush. A man has been found lying dead near Karoo, and beside him were a swag and an open Bible. A brief story, sad and true. Minanu was the first district in the North Midlands to attract a significant number of farmers and a larger population. This photo is of Minanu's main street in 1909. On the far right is the National Bank, and the larger white building next door is the general store of Samuel Moore. The photo was taken by Ernest Mitchell, who was one of WA's leading early photographers, and who also later farmed in Karnama. Many who took up land in the North Midlands put what money they had into their farms, and lived in tents or camps as they slowly cleared and cropped their properties. This camp is near Lake Nido in Latham. It is possibly on the farm of Cowper Todd, who was also the first shopkeeper in Karoo. During the First World War, the issue dividing Australia was conscription, which if passed would have given the government the power to force people to fight overseas in the armed forces. Two plebiscites were held on the issue, and although both were defeated, the people of Minanu were strong supporters of conscription and the yes vote, as evidenced by the photo shown here, which was taken in Minanu. The Daily News reported on the 21st of October 1916. On Wednesday night at Minanu, the local hall was packed with a very enthusiastic audience. The local band played patriotic selections before the meeting and the utmost enthusiasm prevailed. There was an absolutely unanimous show of hands in favour of voting yes. After the First World War, the government purchased several parcels of land across the North Midlands which were then subdivided and allocated to ex-servicemen from the war. Pictured here is Mrs Margaret Clark of Karnama, having a friendly boxing match with a kangaroo. Margaret had nursed and fallen in love with an injured Australian soldier in England during the war, and afterwards returned with him to WA. During the 1920s and 1930s, the North Midlands made headlines for the amount of wheat produced in the region. After being harvested, wheat was emptied into bags, which were sewn up and transported to the closest railway siding, where they were then stacked, as shown in this photo, which was taken in Perendry. Shown here are bags of wheat being loaded onto a trailer in 1927. By looking up the number plates that appear on the truck and trailer, we've been able to ascertain that this photo was taken on William Padbury's Fairfield Farm in Three Springs. As the number of farms increased, it led to the growth of towns throughout the North Midlands. We might think of towns today as established places, but after being surveyed, they were often still covered in virgin bush and streets not much more than tracks. This photo is of the proper formation of Winfield Street in Morrowa in 1929. Although heavily displaced by agricultural development, Many Aboriginal people showed incredible resilience by transferring their skills to work as stockmen on farms and stations across the region. This photograph is of an Aboriginal man known as Gentleman Jim of Morrowa. Many native animals were pushed towards local extinction as farmers hunted them while also destroying their habitat as bush was turned into paddocks. Shown here is a wild turkey being held up by two men on a farm, which is believed to have been taken between Perendry and Karnama. Airstrips were recommended for multiple locations across the North Midlands for the first time in 1932. This photograph is of a tiger moth refuelling in Three Springs during 1936. The fuel was taken out to the plane from Bill Jordan's store in Three Springs, whose truck can be seen on the right. And finally, here we have... Actually, we're not too sure what's going on here. It's a horse wearing a hat with a tie around its neck and a toy bear on its back. Have a great day, everyone, and thanks for coming. To see more photos of our region's past, we encourage you to explore the collections of the Karnama, Minanu and Morawa Historical Societies and the Crew Heritage Group.